All right, so let's take a look at question 12, where you're given a graph and you're given um, um, asymptote values and uh, critical intercepts here, point values, and you're asked to derive a possible equation for this graph. So we need to kind of look at what are all the pieces here to start with here. So the first thing that's, that's obvious here is we know what our x-intercept here is. So I'm just going to write down what the x-intercept is. So the x-intercept here is going to be 0 and, uh, no, sorry, uh, negative 2 and 0. Okay, so we know it's that point right here, the one that's in red. Um, we also know that we have a horizontal asymptote, so HA here, horizontal asymptote, is going to be at y equals 1, okay? And then we also have a vertical asymptote, which we know is going to be here at x is equal to 0. Okay, so what we um, are trying to also figure out is we need to sort of use these numbers here to generate an equation. Now, we've also got this other thing here. We have a point of discontinuity. Okay, so point of discontinuity um, at x equals 3. Okay, which is shown by the open circle there on the line. So this just means that at x equals 3, we um, have had a term that has actually been cancelled out top and bottom um, in from the original expression. So it's not that, it's just that at that point it's undefined, but it's not the same as saying you have a, like a vertical asymptote where the entire line is undefined, like at x equals zero. It's just at this particular point, only at x equals three. Okay, and there's only, and there's a corresponding y value that, that you would say that's um, discontinuous at. Okay, so how can we look at trying to derive an equation? Because that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to write a possible equation for the solution. Okay, so let's think about this here. So we're going to have a, an equation, and we know it's going to be a rational equation. And so it's going to be y equals something, and we're going to have a numerator and a denominator. Okay, so the very first thing we should know is that the denominator is made up of our vertical... Um, asymptote values, um, the ones that it, they can't be, and also any points that have discontinuity in them. Okay, so our vertical asymptote here is at x equals 0. So that is going to be, um, that means we it's just going to be x by itself. Okay, so when x is equal to 0, that is going to be our vertical asymptote. And if you remember what graphs like a y equals 1 over x graph looks like, it's, it's where um, it's, it has this almost, well, it has the exact same shape as this, except um, the, the vertical asymptote is at x is equal to 0. Um, so that means it's, it never crosses the, the uh, y-axis there. Okay, so that's one solution there. But we also have a point of discontinuity at x is equal to 3. Okay, so we can rewrite this equation, x is equal to 3, can be written as x minus 3 is equal to 0. So that means we have a factor here, x minus 3, which would have to be cancelled with another factor on top, because that's how you generate these points of discontinuity. It's where you take an expression and they're factored, and then the two factors cancel. So we basically what we're saying here is that if they cancel we kind of lose those um, expressions, but we don't generate an asymptote out of it. The only asymptote here would be that x cannot be equal to zero. So that's the one vertical line. But that discontinuity is generated because it was canceled. Um, the numerator and the denominator canceled each other. So if we're going to reconstruct the, a possible equation, we have to put them both back in, one into the numerator and one into the denominator. So that's what we would have there. And then um, we also know what one of the x-intercepts are here. So if we want to generate a value where y is equal to zero, that means we have to have we have to have a an expression where if we put in the value of negative two, 
um, we will get a zero um, in the numerator. So that means this would have to be x plus 2, okay, because if we substitute negative 2 in here, we're going to have negative 2 plus 2, which is going to give us a 0. Okay, and then 0 times anything divided by whatever it is is always going to produce a value of 0 for the y. So this is the factor, this is one of the factors that we can get um, from that expression. Okay, and then this looks pretty good as terms of what our equation is going to be. Um, and if we, we also know that the horizontal asymptote is going to be equal to 1, which means that if we were to take the limit of this expression, um, we would have the same number on the top and the same number on the bottom. So one of the ways to tell is you, you look at the degree of the equation. This is going to be an x squared at the top, and this is going to be an x squared on the bottom. So when the degrees are the same, um, the the, hor the horizontal asymptote is going to be equal to 1 um, because it's going to be in the same ratio. But we can kind of work this out and sort of see what we get. So the top value here is going to be x squared um, minus, uh, so it's going to be minus 3x plus 2x, so it's going to be minus x, and this is going to be minus 6. And then the bottom is going to be x squared minus 3x. Okay, so this equation um, is going to be representative of this graph. Okay, and there's a couple ways you could check. So you could plug this into a graphing calculator or Desmos and you'd want to check that. And if you type that in, you'll see exactly that you'll get that. And then the other way, the only thing that we haven't really verified is, is the horizontal asymptote here? So that means if we take the limit of this equation, um, as x goes to infinity, does this produce a value of, of 1? Okay, that means is the top and the bottom. And intuitively, we're sort of getting infinity squared minus infinity minus 6, infinity squared minus 3 times infinity. So the biggest numbers here are going to be x squared over x squared, and that's going to give us a value of 1. But if you wanted to check and using that technique we did in any other questions, you can say, well, we're going to take the limit as x goes to 0. And then what we would do is we would factor out um, x squareds out of the top here. So I'm going to take an x squared out of the top, so it's going to give me 1 minus um, 1 over x minus 6 over x squared. Okay, and then we're going to divide that by x squared 1 minus 3 over x. Okay, and as x goes to infinity, okay, these values go to 0, okay, and then this cancels, so we're going to be left with 1 divided by 1, which is equal to our horizontal asymptote of 1. So this checks out using our, our technique where we factor out basically the highest power out of the, each, each denominator and numerator. Okay, and so that just means that our horizontal asymptote is 1. So this is our final equation, okay, that, that works for this, and that's a possible one that um, you can see when we put it together. Okay, so let's look at question B. So question B is kind of a similar thing, but it's also a different sort of a graph. So the other graph we knew that it was, if you could have guessed that it's similar to like a 1 over x function. Okay, this one has got something that's completely a little bit different. It's got a U, and then it's got two curves that, that cut over on the side. So, <clears throat> again, we need to kind of step back and figure out what, what are we finding here. So, we have our vertical asymptotes, first of all. So, let's take a look at what those are. So, we have a vertical asymptote here at x equals 2, and we have one at x is equal to negative 7. Okay, so those are our two asymptotes here, which implies that we have an expression here that is x minus 2 is equal to 0, and x plus 7 is equal to 0. Okay, so again, we're thinking a little bit ahead. That remember that vertical asymptotes are going to be long in the denominator. We also know, um, well, we have a horizontal asymptote here, which is going to be at y is equal to negative 4. Okay, so y is equal to negative 4. And then we also have 
our x-intercepts here, where we have two points. We have uh, negative 2 comma 0, because that's the origin, so we're at negative 2 comma 0, and then we're 3 more, so we're at negative 5 comma 0. So again, our x-intercepts tell us that when we plug in a value of negative 2, we're going to generate a y-value that's equal to 0. Okay, so let's see what kind of expression we can get out of this. So again, y is equal to something. We're going to have a numerator and a denominator. So our vertical asymptotes are given by our denominator. So it's going to be x minus 2 times x plus 7. Okay, and then our, our x-intercepts are given by the numerator because we need an expression such that if I put negative 2 in, I will get a value of 0 for y. Okay, so the only thing that will work for that is going to be x plus 2. Okay, and then the only thing that where we can put in a factor where if I sub in negative 5, it's going to be x plus 5. Okay, so this expression is going to give us something very, very close to what this is right here right now. Now, the only thing is, is that we have a horizontal asymptote of negative 4. Okay, so again, what we have here is we've got a polynomial that is the same degree on the top and the bottom, but the ratio of this polynomial is actually equal to what the horizontal asymptote is. So if we have a negative 4 here, all we have to do is multiply the top value by negative 4 because these values, as they tend to infinity, again, we can do the limit tests or do that limit um, uh, algebra uh, manipulation, and it will show that these terms will cancel out and our, and our limit will be y equals to equal to negative 4, which is our horizontal asymptote. So our final answer for this, if we want to expand it out, can be something similar to, so this is going to be x squared plus 7x plus 10 divided by x squared plus 5x minus 14. And then if we want to be a little bit more complete, we can multiply the 4 through and have negative 4x uh, minus 28 uh, minus 40 all over the, that bottom equation. So again, the way you want to check this is that you can plug this into a graphing calculator or plug this into Desmos, and you would see that this equation would generate that shape of that graph, um, as funny as that appears to be.